It's Geeks Time. We are back. It's Monday evening. Hope you had a great weekend. Thanks to everyone who tuned in to our severe weather coverage Sunday afternoon into Sunday evening. Those storms really meant some business in some places, and it was a big hail event. We'll kind of recap that, but first let's recap the first half of April because it's been very noteworthy in the rainfall department at the Youngstown Warren Airport in Vienna. Easily the wettest first half of April on record, despite us putting up a zero today. Of course, it was a beautiful day out there today. But yeah, 5.32 is where we stand at the airport for April. That's almost three and a half inches more than average. And some parts of our area, as you know, have had more rain than this particular place in Trumbull County. So uh, generally, where you start to see kind of these tan colors, that's more than four inches worth of rain. And when you get into this area, especially around and east of I-79 and PA, uh, kind of between I-79 and I-99 in Pennsylvania. That's kind of the zone where uh, there's been some rainfall totals approaching 8 or 9 inches so far in the month of April. Pretty ridiculous for the first 15 days of the month. Generally, the rainfall has been a little bit less crazy heading to the west of the Youngstown area, but even all these totals are still above the average for the first half of the month. Yesterday's storms, um, some some wind, yes, locally. We even had a 68 mile per hour gust at the airport at about 5.30 yesterday evening, but the most numerous severe weather reports easily uh, from these storms yesterday, the hail. We had a lot of hail. Got a lot of pictures, thanks to everyone who shared pictures and videos with us of the hailstones across the area. And this was not just the pea-sized stuff. This uh, was a hail event that we typically only see maybe once or twice a year in far eastern Ohio and western Pennsylvania. Hail size, uh, the diameter of the hailstones an inch and a half even two inches that's you know that's stuff that uh, is more typical in texas and oklahoma and kansas and not necessarily around here anything above one inch is considered to be severe the weather service will issue a severe thunderstorm warning uh, with hail of one inch in diameter or larger uh, and again once you're up to an inch and a half to two inches um, very uncommon in our part of the country ping pong size is about an inch and a half golf ball about an inch and three quarters and then head egg that's two inch in diameter hail once you get above that that's something we almost never see in our part of the country we almost never ever see tennis ball size hail once in a blue moon but uh, once or twice a year we get to one of these big hail events and we certainly had one like that yesterday all right, the severe weather risk going forward, uh, we're going to focus on midweek locally, and I don't think this is going to be anything uh, too crazy around here. In fact, let's uh, let's talk about uh, what to will happen over the next few days um, with our severe weather risk. We're going to go from having no problems Monday and Tuesday to Wednesday, a front approaches, and while the severe weather risk on Wednesday is definitely, I think, higher in Indianapolis and Dayton and Cincinnati, I do expect at least the chance around eastern Ohio and western PA of a gusty late day storm on Wednesday. But before we get to the future, let's talk briefly about the present because it's just a postcard evening out there. What a fantastic just chamber of commerce afternoon today with not a cloud in the sky temperatures near 70 those dew points way low so the visibility is great this is something that we deserve after all the kind of clammy unsettled weather we've had of late now going forward again here's our warm front lifting in for our tuesday just some cirrus clouds with the approach of that i'm expecting dry weather for tuesday and tuesday evening now with this warm front lifting in uh, shower chances will ramp up later Tuesday night into Wednesday morning, but I don't think Wednesday is any sort of washout. In fact, there probably will be some intervals of sunshine on Wednesday. Best chance of that gusty thunderstorm again comes towards uh, sunset Wednesday evening, and I don't think it's a very high chance of severe weather, but a gusty storm, something that uh, we can't rule out at this point. And then as this front crawls off to our east, we should be dry on Thursday. Temperatures will start to cool down at the end of the week. Um, but a more pronounced cooling trend for the upcoming weekend. So we just kind of get back to average by the end of the week and then over the weekend, especially on Sunday, and this is despite a fair amount of sunshine in our Sunday forecast, we're probably going to fall about to 10 degrees shy of the average on Sunday. And then beyond that, I expect the opposite trend as we head towards the last week of April. I think spring is going to be back in full force last week of April, and I suspect the end of April and the start of May will be pretty warm. We're going to have our first stab at the official May outlook probably later this week on weather for weather geeks. Uh, 
when I did the spring forecast back in late February, very start of March, talked about the possibility of, of May being on the cool side because of some of the analog years we were using to construct that forecast. Uh, right now the modeling is not necessarily agreeing with some of those analog ideas, so we'll, uh, we'll have a little bit of a tug of war, I think, between history and what the models may be kind of advertising this time around. At least that's the way it looks right now, but today's only tax day, of course. We're going to be able to uh, hone in with more detail on that May forecast over the next couple of weeks, but again, we'll take our first stab at it later this week on Weather for Weather Geeks. Thanks for watching on this Monday evening. I will see you right back here, same time, same place, on Tuesday.